Welcome back to TarHeelIllustrated.com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does, THI publisher Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here for our UNC basketball ISO series. We're going to be kind of focusing on the, some of the returning players that are coming back. We're going to be doing videos on six of them. We're going to leave Puff Johnson out of it just because of his injury issues last year. We didn't really get a large sample size and get to see him play a lot. So we're going to be doing six players that were on the team last year and played, and we'll be running that, the, those out of the next few weeks. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But before we dive into it, make sure you guys head on over to our website, tarheelillustrated.com, which you can see right above us, and you can find linked in our description below. And sign up for our premium message boards for just 8 33 a month can't stress enough how much of our recruiting content in particular along with some other articles and stuff that we write throughout the football and basketball seasons and off seasons as well you can only access this stuff if you're if you're uh, signed up as a premium uh, member and premium subscriber just 833 a month if you're a darhard carolina football basketball recruiting fan and follow all that stuff you will not regret signing up for this i'm on the boards aj and dina and, and david are on the boards a ton as well so make sure you guys sign up for that for just 833 a month and come join our community at tarhillillustrated.com but enough of the plugs aj let's dive into this one we're here to talk about caleb love in this episode of our unc basketball iso series i mean a guy that came in as a true freshman last year, very highly touted player, um, you know, started at guard for Tar Heels for the majority of the season. Going to run through some of his stats and stuff, and then we'll kind of dive into him. Uh, played 27.7 minutes per game last year, 10.5 points, 2.6 rebounds, and 3.6 assists. Was voted to the ACC all-freshman team and actually led UNC in assists with 104. Second in scoring at 10.5 per game and um, was steals and three-pointers as well. So, you know, Caleb Love was a guy that, you know, you saw the potential in him. I think his biggest struggle with him last year was shooting the ball, only 31.6 uh, field goal percentage and 26.6% um, from three-point land. So really most of Caleb Love's struggles, in my opinion, came shooting the ball, just wasn't able to hit shots on a consistent basis, had a couple of big games against Duke in particular, a couple other ones in, sprinkled in there as well. But you know, I thought for me, Caleb Love, there was a learning cu curve there. You see it a lot of the times when you when you see freshman guards come in that are kind of given the keys to Roy Williams' system as a point guard. There's usually kind of a learning curve and a slow adjustment period that kind of it takes to get these guys going. But we did see glimpses of what Caleb Love could do as a true freshman. I think his expectations for him are a lot higher now under Hubert Davis going into his second season, and you would expect him to continue to develop. But I thought overall – to sum Caleb up for me, we saw glimpses. We saw what he can do at times, but inconsistency, I, I think, was probably the name of the game for him as a true freshman at Chapel Hill. Well, the shooting percentage isn't, well, he just couldn't shoot. I think a lot of it was born out of how he got those shots, where they came from, mm -hmm. uh, what were the factors around taking some of the shots. A lot of missed shots in the lane, for example, we – we talked about this with David Sisk when he and I did one when we, we kind of looked at the effect of the, the transfer pool kids, McCoy and Manic coming, how that's going to affect next year's team. And I think Caleb is a guy that's really going to benefit a lot because they're going to play more of a spread. So this past season, you know, Caleb's a drive to the basket guy. He, he He's a get, you, get your defender on your hip, get past him, get in the lane and score in a variety of ways there. But what happened so often was when he got into the lane, there were two bigs there offensively. So there were two bigs there deep. It was a little congested at times. And that's why there were many situations in which Caleb Love left his feet in the lane and there was nothing there. Yeah. And that it really affected his shot, his shooting percentage. In fact, there was a stretch there um, late in the season, the last five or eight games, I guess it was, he shot around 29.8% from the floor overall, but he was. 27.8% inside the arc. Yeah. So people fixated on his three-point shooting, which was horrible in stretches. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't convert inside the arc. I don't think he was very comfortable getting the kind of looks he needs to get to have a higher percentage. So the degree of difficulty was clearly an issue with Caleb Love. And I think a lot of that will change just by nature of them having a different setup offensively, being a little bit more spread out, there's going to be one big 
down low. There'll be times when they're two, one down low. And, you know, the way Armando's game will change with him stepping away a little bit some, he could drag a defender away. He's going to have to be guarded at 10 or 12 feet. And I think those lanes will be there a little bit more for Caleb this year. I also think pressing, trying to yeah. run Roy's offense and, and do it in the demanding way that Roy wanted him to, I think that that affected him at times. And, you know, if your mind's not super clear, you're not going to shoot that well. If your mind's not super clear, you're not going to hit a baseball very well. If your mind's not super clear, you're not going to make that nine-foot putt. Mm-hmm. And in playing point guard and being a, a volume scoring point guard and a high shooting point guard, uh, a guy that takes a lot of shots, you have to have a clear mind or you're going to have some of those one for eight nights like you had. You know, in 29 games, 25 of those 29 games, Caleb shot less than 50% from the floor. Mm-hmm. Two of them, in which he didn't, was Duke. Mm-hmm. So when we, were, when we ran our piece about his five, we did this series and we're still running some stuff, the five best games and the returning players and what they mean. I think when you look at Caleb's best games, especially two being against Duke, it showed that there's that guy in him, there's that dog in him, that dude that steps up to the big stage. And, and if he had some confidence issues or some stressed mind issues going in, in those particular games, he was able to shake them off. Now, he didn't play well in the NCAA tournament, he didn't play well the last two games in the ACC tournament, but the Duke games, he did. And I think there's a lot that we saw in those games that are glimpses into the future. I think he's going to be a big game guy. I think he's going to have some dog in him. I think he's going to have a lot uh, more uh, unimpeded lanes to the basket. And I think he's going to be more free flowing. He's going to be more comfortable. I think he's going to see the floor better. And as a result, he's going to shoot better inside the arc. He's going to shoot better outside the arc. He's going to see teammates. He's going to make passes that actually get to them a higher frequency than he did last season. The barrage of turnovers, he may still have some big turnover games, but I don't think he's going to have as many. I think the assist to turnover ratio is going to be better. And I think defensively, you know, he improved. Roy said he could be a great defensive player. Mm -hmm. And I think we saw him improve, had some pretty good games late. Uh, I think the toughness getting around, getting through screens, we saw more of that. Even in the Wisconsin game, if you go back and look early in the Wisconsin game, I mean, they were ball screening like crazy. And he was getting around those, mm-hmm. getting through them, getting around them. And he was getting over the top. He wasn't going behind the screen. So he showed that he was learning a lot of those little areas. Now you give Caleb an offseason with all the players back, a little bit more toughness, I think a clearer mind, all that other stuff. I have high expectations for him this year. And I guarantee you he does, and I guarantee Hubert Davis does. Yeah, and we talked about it during the season at times. We're going to keep these relatively short, so this is the last thing I kind of want to ask you. We yeah. talked during the season a lot. We talked about a guy like Joel Berry, for instance, you know, great point guard for Carolina in his older years. But as a freshman, I mean, make no mistakes about it. He was not a good point guard. He was not a good player at Carolina as a freshman. He really, really struggled. And you look at kind of Caleb Love's stats, which I ran through. I mean, all ACC freshman team. Obviously, his shooting percentages were not good. No two ways about that. But, you know, 10.5 points per game, over two rebounds, close to four assists in, in, in about 28 minutes per game. And like I said earlier, led UNC in assist and was second in scoring steals and three-pointers. I mean, when you look at just how much he struggled shooting the ball and struggled to find consistency, you're still looking at those stats and saying, I mean, that's pretty good for a guy that, you know, maybe the system that Roy was playing with two bigs didn't really fit him. When you look at what he did in high school as a guy that was a get to the basket guy and finish around the rim, that made it a lot more difficult when you've got two bigs down there clogging the lane. So I guess my question is, when you look at these stats, do you think it's really just a a case of two things for Caleb? comfortability, which you would get from playing a year and obviously going through the offseason, a regular full offseason for the Tar Heels going into his second year. Do you think it's just a case of a little bit of comfortability and maybe a system thing when you look at maybe how Hubert's looking to play with maybe a little bit emphasis on the bigs down there and kind of focusing on more guys that can step out and hit threes in a manic and a guy that can step out and hit shots like McCoy? Do you think it's really just those two factors for Caleb maybe? Well, yeah, I alluded to that a little bit a couple minutes ago, but also I think it's let's remember that Caleb was learning how to play point guard. Yeah, it's a good point. He was not a classic true point guard in high school. He was pounding the ball on the floor, get a lot of buckets guy because he yeah. was the best player on the floor every time he took the floor. <clears throat> Roy wanted to turn him into a point guard, which I think is going to help Caleb so much in his basketball career that having experienced that and evolving into that guy 
you don't have to be a classic traditional point guard at the NBA level to have a lot of success, but you got to be able to run things. If you when you're running all this two man stuff, you got to be able to set it up. You got to be able to, to run set plays. You got to be able to recognize things. You got to be able to see the floor from the top of the key. And I think Caleb did improve in that area. If you if you look at the assist numbers, the high game high assist numbers in games, you really get into January, mid January, around Wake Forest or something like that. Most of his best assist games were all after that. So he improved. He 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 got better at running the system. He got better at being a point guard. Mm-hmm. Let, think about it. He, he was not a point guard, and something he's asked to do it. He's asked to do it on a young team, but a lot of guys were out there at times not knowing what the heck they were supposed to do, making a lot of mistakes with bigs down low who couldn't step out. And I just think a lot of stress, a lot of pressure of, of having the keys to the North Carolina offense when you're the 325th most experienced team yeah, that's wild. in the country. You know, Kobe White, when he took over and ended up beating out Seventh Woods a couple of weeks into the season, his freshman year, he had Kenny Williams out there. He had Luke May out there. He had Cam Johnson out there. Uh, uh, Caleb didn't have that luxury. So I do think that all those things are factors. And, and you mentioned Joel Berry. You know, Joel took a while to adjust. Then he had that injury mm-hmm. his freshman year. But I remember being down in Atlanta when he, he returned. He played pretty well. And it was sort of some insight. Okay, he benefited from sitting and watching for a while because he got a chance to exhale. Yeah. And sometimes you don't get a chance to exhale as a freshman until the season's over. So I think that factor, you know, Caleb went through weighing options and, and determined that Carolina was the best place to be. And he will grow there. And I think the exhale factor and then some of the changes that have taken place and will continue to take, take place will benefit him as well. I think he's going to be really good as a sophomore. He's going to be a really good defensive player. I think you'll see some leadership. He'll be more vocal. He wasn't very vocal as a freshman. And I think we'll see a lot more maturity from him in the ways that we view it as, as members of the media when we deal with him. I'm not saying he was immature, but we'll just see more maturity. We'll see him talk the game at a higher level like Kobe did. Yeah. I always reference that Kentucky game in Chicago. I'm in the locker room talking to Kobe. And he that was the first time he started talking about what, what all the other guys were supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. We're going to get that from Caleb at some point before Christmas. And when we do, that's going to be a sign that he's taken the next step forward as a point guard because he's got to be fully connected to the other four on the floor at times. And often at times he was not last year, but I think he will be next season. Yeah, he's a moxie guy too. We did, we saw it for glimpses last season as well. You know, when he's playing well, he, he's he, he, you can tell he's playing well. You can tell he's enjoying himself. And I think we'll definitely see a little bit more of that moxie come out. I agree next season as well and just flash back to that game at Cameron is a perfect example some of the things he was doing in that game really fun guy to watch really entertaining guy to watch and once he gets a little more comfortable once he finds a little bit more consistent a little bit more sure of himself which you would expect going into his sophomore season I think there's no doubt that Caleb's going to be a really really good point guard for the Tar Heels but AJ I think it's a good place to wrap this one up this is you know this is the UNC basketball ISO series we're going to be doing on a handful of Carolina's returning players so make sure you guys stay tuned for the other episodes we've done and what we'll have coming out as well but as always guys make sure you head on over to our website tarlillustrated.com after this sign up to be a premium member for just 833 a month a ton of perks and a ton of things that come along that and the premium boards and the premium content is just a great thing to do if you're a diehard carolina fan and and follow this stuff and and we go where the tar heels go as aj likes to say and i like to say as well so definitely a good time to sign up in the off season i've been jacob turner he's been andrew jones you guys know the drill Like this video if you enjoyed it, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.